We're over a month into the season, so it's time to examine the Yankees' biggest experiment of the year, Anthony Volpe. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. And as always, alongside me is my producer, Steve Granado. Steve, what's going on today? Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, Yankees won. How about that? Uh, they can do it. Four game losing streak is over. We're going to talk about that. Don't worry. That's going to come up a little bit later on in the show. Hey, if you're on our audio side, come join the YouTube community and you could be a part of our Friday shows. The link is in the show notes, of course, on the audio side. Come subscribe over here and join over 2,300 Yankees fans. Now you guys are crushing it. Thanks for being a part of our community. Drop your questions in our comments of this youtube video and of course you could be a part of our friday show we answer them on fridays uh we have a game three preview the rubber match against cleveland is coming up later on tonight of course we're going to talk about last night's victory but first stacy uh let's talk about anthony volpe so from the very beginning from spring training uh what three weeks in we're saying if Volpe was going to be a part of the yankees to start the 2023 season we said that the yankees had to be patient and that they had to give him at least a month in the majors to figure things out. Yep. It's May, which <laughs> means he has played a month in the majors. And we're going to figure out, has he figured it out? I think it's a bit of a tricky conversation. So here are the numbers on Volpe's first 31 games in the majors. And I hope in 15 years, this conversation sucks. Right. <laughs> uh, 31 games, 116 plate appearances. Slash line of 230, 336, 370. Uh, he has three doubles, one triple, three homers, nine driven in, and 33 strikeouts uh, in 31 games. So, Stacy, before we get too deep into it, what are your initial thoughts and feelings on how Anthony Volpe's first month has been? I think it's been perfectly fine. I feel like he's going through the normal lulls that someone coming up playing in the majors for the first time and facing a lot of these guys for the first time should be having while not looking too overly matched while he's playing you know he'll have some bad games but you know a lot of the other Yankees are having bad games too and I feel like these are actually good numbers for the first month that 230 average is obviously going to jump out at you um, the 370 slugging has been really down. That's obvious. I mean, the numbers aren't like flashy, obviously sure. they're not. Right. Um, let's start with his bat, Stacy, since we're already talking about it, um, and just kind of the offense overall for Anthony Volpe. What things have stuck out to you about his play initially? I just love how quick he is when he's running on the bases like no matter what he hits if it's a single he's running hard um you know he's stretching doubles into triples with ease it's so much fun watching him do that and i just i'm waiting for him to get reg or make regular contact so i can see him on the bases that much mm -hmm. um it's just he's fun to watch and i feel like he's gonna get a lot better yeah um, he's 10 for 10 in stolen bases. We talked about, uh, we're going to talk about Tuesday's game. Of course, uh, he picked up two stolen bases that directly impacted the score after he picked up a knock. Of course, uh, his big home run, of course, as well, kickstarted the Yankees comeback. Um, how about this Stacy? So again, we here on locked on Yankees, if you're joining us for the first time, hello, hi, I'm Steve. That's Stacy. Uh, <laughs> but we will admit when we were wrong, we were wrong about Anthony Volpe from the beginning. Right. We were wrong. We did not think he was going to actually make the major league roster. We were wrong. We admitted it. Mm -hmm. We were also wrong. And I think this is more so on my part that Anthony Volpe was not going to get a chance in the leadoff spot. Mm -hmm. And when, the way he was playing in the ninth spot did, in my mind, did not warrant him being able to get to the leadoff spot. And for as much crap as let's be frank, yesterday we gave Aaron Boone for his mistakes. He made the right decision here. In moving oh, yeah. Anthony Volpe to the leadoff spot. So call a spade a spade and give credit when it's due. Volpe in the nine, slash of 167, 302, which with a 167 average is great, uh, 222 slug mm. in the leadoff spot as of this recording, 
258, 352, 452. Drastic improvements in every single category and 804 OPS. For a guy that at his age and what I saw, I'm not expecting this dude to hit 30 bombs or anything. I think he's like a 10 home run a year kind of guy, 15. Right, on like maybe year. 15 on a good year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so again, credit Aaron Boone here. He made the right decision. Would you agree? Oh, yes. Yeah. And he had said that, you know, he said that um, he felt like he would probably move Volpe into the leadoff spot at some point. And yeah, you know, you look at those numbers, the 258, 352, 452, and the 804 OPS, and that just looks so much better. And he could be the spark for this team in that leadoff spot once everyone gets healthy. But he was the spark on Tuesday for a couple of reasons. And I love him in the leadoff spot and I don't want to see him out of the leadoff spot. I feel like it's yeah. his spot to lose right now. Yeah, He was leading off for the rail riders last season when Oswald Peraza got called up um, and Florial was up at that point too, as well. So it'd been Florial uh, as the leadoff man in Scranton Wilkes-Barre all last season. And then once Volpe got up, it was him. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned his big home run. And what that sparked, you know, it was a two nothing ball game. He ends up getting in the board with a solo shot uh, that go ahead home run on April 22nd against Toronto, obviously his biggest hit. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and that that's the Anthony Volpe that I think you, you kind of got a glimpse of it right there of the potential of this kid. Yeah. Um, there is obviously lots to learn still. Sure. And the growing pains will continue. But I think. When we say growing pains, the pains haven't been that harmful to the Yankees, right? No, no, he's not making, you know, he's not blowing games by making defensive mistakes. He's not, you know, so far, yeah, I don't believe he's come up in a big spot where he's, you know, the last guy up in the ninth inning and he needs to hit the ball and doesn't do it. Um, so I don't think it's been anything like that. And, you know, you'll you'll see him make some mistakes. He might slow down a bit. You know, he might hit some sort of a wall from playing so many games in the majors, and that might happen later in the year. But he's just, uh, yeah, his growing pains are not as bad as one may have envisioned them to be. <laughs> yeah, I think he's filled the role nicely. And I think a lot of that you mentioned defense, Stacey. Oh, yeah. And I think when we talk about his defense, save that weird three game stretch where he had three errors in three games and yeah. he had one error earlier on in the season, early April, that kind of cost a late ending situation. Mm -hmm. um, but save that, I think his defense has been great. Yes. And, you know, I mean, I, I made this joke earlier in the season, but it does feel nice. Uh, to see a ball hit to shortstop and not feel uncomfortable because it's it's nice seeing someone who can play the position pretty well. He made a really great play on Tuesday night. Um, you know, Wandy throwing while he's falling in front of the mound to second to get the out at second. And it wasn't exactly game saving, but it could have potentially been game saving because, you know, Cleveland was starting to get something going when the Yankees were only up three, two. So yeah, that was that was a big play. And it was just a really quick pick at second. And even Michael Kay was like, whoa, look at that pick. You know, it was really oh, he lost his mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in. He's on the Volpe hype train. Choo choo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, defensively, we knew he had the talent. Um, I think his instincts have really kicked in at the major league level. It doesn't seem like the speed of major league baseball has caught up to him that much. Yeah. Uh, which is nice. He he knows the timing. He understands where to be on the field. Like he has all the makings of a shortstop. Whether he and is the Yankee shortstop of the future is still to be determined. Oswald Peraza still might take that spot eventually. Right now it's Volpe's to lose. That's still for sure. Um, Stacey, I wanted to ask you this as we kind of wrap up this conversation. Do you think it was the right decision at this point to start Volpe in, on the major league roster on opening day? Yes. Definitely. Straight up. Yes. Straight up. No <laughs> ifs, ands, or buts. No ifs, ands, or buts. <laughs> and it's been one of the highlights. Like <laughs> one of the highlights of the uh, last two weeks, is even yeah. still. Yeah. The question I now have as we look into the future, as we think again back to opening day and we gave it the month timeline. The month is here. What's the timeline now? Is this Anthony Volpe, this 230 average, thanks to a big night? Is that Anthony Volpe still good enough to be on the Yankees in another month? 
Yes. I feel like if he doesn't fall off a lot, yes. Um, but I feel like if they keep putting him in the leadoff spot, he's going to get better. And I feel yeah. like when more guys come back, things will get better. And I feel like he's going to improve. And he's going to feel more comfortable further into the season, you know? I don't feel like he's going anywhere. I feel like he's here to stay. I it mean, you have... know, don't put yeah. money on that, but I, that's how I feel right now. I feel like he's here to stay. So you feel like he would have to fall off pretty significantly, oh, maybe yeah. regress to like second week of April for a month to like have a to be Oh, set yes. Back yeah, it would have but to because be Because at this really... point, too, it's not like Oswald's like ba banging on the door, like, let me play, right? Because he's right. still he's still struggling, let's be fair. Um, yeah, okay. Let us know what you think about this. Do you think it was the right decision to start Anthony Volpe in the majors? For the record, by the way, I think you're right. Uh, I agree with you. And again, we admit when we're wrong. And I think the growing pains have not been so painful. Um, he hasn't lost any games, really. Like, he hasn't no. lost anything. And the other, and the options outside of it are what? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Trey Sweeney's still a double A. Um, yeah. So that, that's really the other option. And Oswald, obviously. But uh, let us know what you think about this uh, down in the comment section. Stacey, we did have one quick bit of news on Lou Trevino. Yes, uh, we said on Monday show that he was going to see Dr. Neil L. Atreich and uh, Dr. L. Atreich said, Tommy John surgery, you're having it because he's one of the well-known guys at the uh, Job wing of Cedar sinai So as soon as we found out he was going to see him, you pretty much knew, okay, that's probably going to happen. So he's undergoing Tommy John. I don't think there's a set date for it yet, but it's definitely happening. And that's just a bummer. I mean, yeah. it's just unbelievable how bad the trade deadline ended up being for the Yankees. Really, though. Uh, he has one more arbitration year in 2024. After that, he'll become an unrestricted unrestricted free agent. So he'll be back. He'll be yeah. back. At least it's happening early on this year. That way he'd be somewhere. Probably not opening day. I imagine not right. opening day. I would, uh, yeah. But probably like June next year. I'd yeah. earmark it. He's not going to pull uh, a Bryce Harper. <laughs> Yeah, well, no one is. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's the update. And, of course, we wish all the luck to Lou. Yes. Uh, hopefully he's able to turn it back around and uh, get better soon. Um, again, let us know how you're feeling about this Volpe stuff. And uh, we got some information more coming your way here in just a second. We're going to talk about last night's win over the Cleveland Guardians to set up this rubber match. You can catch all the games on Sirius XM, of course, with John and Susan. We'll be back in a second. Have you ever forgotten about a free trial subscription and then ended up paying for it? Rocket Money can help with that. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. You could be wasting money and not even realizing it. Rocket Money helps you find those forgotten subscriptions so you can stop paying for the ones you don't use. Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month, but the actual total on subscriptions closer to 200 rocket money also helps you manage your finances in one place automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off rocket money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions monitors your spending and helps you lower your bills all in one place Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Hey, back here on Locked On Yankees. Thanks for making us your first listen every single day to the everydayers out there. Coming up on Thursday's show, we have our thoughts on the Guardian series. Can the Yankees pull out the victory and the series dub for that big, crucial off day and then that big, crucial series against Tampa Bay? We're going to talk about it. Hit that subscribe button right here. Stacey, a win on Tuesday, 4-2. to two. Let's start with a conversation about Garrett Cole. Your thoughts on Cole's outing? You know, he clearly it wasn't at his best, but, you know, I will take six innings, two runs, from anyone at this point and you know it's kind of funny that we're talking about being you know disappointed in six innings and two runs but hey still has not given up a home run those two runs none of them were via the home run so here we are it's 
May 3rd, <laughs> and he has not given up a home run yet after giving up 33 in 2022. So something is clearly working for him. And, you know, it's funny. We said they had to win this game when we were, remember when we were previewing and I joked because you were like, oh, if they win this and win this. And then you mentioned, uh-huh. well, if they lose Tuesday, I'm like, no, they can't lose Tuesday. That's Cole's start. <laughs> no, it's Cole, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And it's just funny that he didn't factor into the decision, but, you know, strong enough performance, eight strikeouts in those six innings, you know, mm-hmm. th- three walks, hmm, um, five hits. Eh. But again, ERA is 1.35. He's still pitching really well. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that third inning obviously got away from him a little bit there. That I think that's the most frustrated I've seen Garrett Cole this season. Yes. Uh, <laughs> at any point, And you could just see it. The look on his face. He was pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that bounce back in the fourth was huge. I think that really got him back on the right track. Uh, we've talked a lot about his fastball this year and how important it's been to play up in the zone. And I think once he turned around in the fourth, he started firing his fastball at the top of the zone for yeah. a strike. I think that's super crucial. Yes. And um, and he started doing that because everything builds off of that fastball for him. And he did it again. And yeah. that's when he got back on track. So if there's, again, I like to say this, if there's one thing you take away from this episode, um, it's when you're watching Garrett Cole, if that fastball in the, up in the zone is playing right, then Garrett Cole is going to have a good outing. Yeah. Yeah. Every and time. it's good that he didn't let it get away f- from him. You know, he didn't let it get more than two. And mm-hmm. he was able to settle down and, you know, just kick it into gear and just be Garrett Cole. But yeah, he's just even... Even in this start, he's still on another level this season. It's yeah. just so much fun to watch him. Yeah. Uh, the comeback, Stacy. The Yankees were trailing two to nothing. And as we mentioned, Volpe with the solo shot in the sixth. Um, kind of a quiet home run. He kind of just jogged around the bases. He's like, yeah. we're still losing, dude. Yeah. And uh, things aren't going great. Um, but that Rizzo RBI to score Glaber, how huge is that? It's so big. And it's, it's really funny because when Volpe hit the home run to make it 2-1 my friend in our slack group said well there's their one run for the night okay cool they're not going to be <laughs> shut out and there was a streak on the line here um the last time the yankees had a streak of five games where they didn't score more than two runs was in august of 2015 and they were in danger of having that happen if they didn't win tonight and if they didn't score more than two runs and when rizzo scored glaber it felt different to me it almost felt like oh they might actually be okay tonight. This is a yeah. weird feeling. Hmm. Well, they're attacking pitches uh, over the plate tonight. Yeah. They weren't swinging and missing, which has been the problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And they definitely attacked uh, mistakes from Tanner Bybee and the bullpen. Uh, Bybee was pitching well, by the way. He really um, was. Yeah. Uh, what a, He really lived up to the moment. Uh, Willie Calhoun solo shot in the seventh. That had to have felt good for him. I mean, you know, of all people to put the Yankees ahead, and basically that was the game-winning home run there you know the uh the extra run they scored in the eighth which we'll get into was really insurance but for willie that was just great and another running fast around the bases like hey awesome i did this it's my first home run of the season and he had a serious look on his face the entire time and then he crossed home plate and someone gave him a face i don't know who it was i couldn't tell from the camera angle but he started smiling and it was like i think the person was probably like you can smile. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, man. Relax, relax. Uh, that would have had to have felt good. Uh, but like you said, uh, Volpe single, steals second, steals third, um, and DJ swats a single to right. I think if Volpe had only stolen second, not stolen third, he would have been held there. That ball yep. was pretty hard. So uh, Volpe 100% brought himself in there. 99% yeah. brought himself in there. Uh, mm-hmm. Nice job by DJ. I think, again, DJ's got to have to really step up with Judge out, um, and he did so on Tuesday night. Uh, any had- other way- DJ and Rizzo. And, and they Rizzo, both did. yes. Yes, yep. they both did. Uh, any other takeaways, Stacey, from Tuesday night's win? Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm past the point of being mad at Aaron Hicks, and I'm just, I feel sad for him because he just can't get anything yeah. done. I and felt terrible for him. Yeah, you know, I was listening to the game on our smart device, but also watching, like I was listening with the sound on the smart device, but watching on my computer, and I could hear just the, the roar of, you know, he hit that ground ball to end the inning and it was just like, you know, later in the game and ugh, just the noise that was coming down, the the vociferous yeah. booing coming down, <laughs> raining upon. I feel bad for that dude, man. Yeah. I really do. It's not I like really it's not like he's not trying. It's just yeah. he's it's just not happening for him. Yeah. And they can't um, 
they have to play him at this point because so many people yeah. are hurt. Like he's not going to play every game, but he's going to, you're going to see him. He in has games to contribute. And... He has to contribute. <sighs> yeah. Um, feel bad for him. I definitely feel bad for him. Uh, I never want players to fail. Like no. I, ever, ever. Even if I dislike the player, I'm like, well, dude, I mean, you still work your tail off to get here, man. He's <laughs> yeah. still, he's still a talented baseball player. Like it doesn't matter. It's just, man, it's just nothing's working for that poor guy. Yeah. Um, hey, finale of the series against Cleveland with the series on the line. Can the Yankees win it? You can find out tonight on the SiriusXM app, 705 Eastern for the finale off day on Thursday. Hey, we have a preview of that game when we come back. So Rare is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 Major League Baseball teams. Unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, So Rare managers truly own their fantasy experience, collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own your cards and there's no cost to play. MLB Game Weeks, Game Weeks, there we go, happen twice weekly and span a three to four day cycle. At the end of each week, so rare managers who rank near or at the top of the leaderboard will win a variety of rewards. It could be cards, tickets, merchandise, or even VIP experiences, including meeting Major League Baseball stars. Prizes may vary depending on the competition, so head to SoRare.com slash LockedOn, that's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E dot com, to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash LockedOn to start playing today. Hey, back here for our final segment of the day. Stacy, a tough matchup today. Shane Bieber versus Clark Schmidt. Uh, Bieber's coming off of a really nice start. Yeah, he went seven innings, gave up two runs on five hits, walked two, struck out four against Boston his last time out. He beat the Yankees on April 10th, also going seven innings, also giving up two runs on five hits, but walking three and striking out four. That's mm -hmm. kind of odd. That's almost the same. That's exact. why I put that there. Yeah, <laughs> I was weird. like, wait a second. Yeah, that's really weird. Um, it's just funny that in back-to-back -back starts, Schmidt was up against DeGrom on Friday in Texas, and now he's up against Shane Bieber. This, this man cannot get a break. <laughs> <laughs> he really can't this poor dude this poor dude <laughs> oh man i gotta feel for him uh schmidt in that start against Degrom, five runs in five innings stacy mm. give me a line that you'd be happy with Oof. all right i'd be happy with five i'd be happier with six but i don't want to push it um i would say huh, two two runs in five innings, but I feel like that's asking too much. I'd be happy with that, but I feel like that's asking too much from Clark Schmidt. I feel like he's going to give up three in five innings. <laughs> I'm going to go five and a third, mm. three runs, two earned. Mm, ooh, okay. That's that's my mark. Five and a third, three runs, two earned, four strikeouts. And okay. try and limit the walks to three or under, and I'm good. I will say... Five strikeouts. I'm going to go with fives. Okay. I don't know why, but, you know, yeah. Here, here's a new one. If you stayed this long on the YouTube side, <laughs> which we know a lot of you don't, but your audio, we know the audio listeners stick around because you guys are awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, we love you, too. I know I keep telling you guys to come to the uh, YouTube side, but we still love you on the audio side. Come on. We, we still do. We, we, pre we appreciate the OGs who were around when this was an audio show only. So, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so, but if you are still around here, Drop your predictions for Clark Schmidt in the comments. There you go. That's that's how we'll know, and we'll give you a heart. That's how you know. <laughs> that's like, the ah, tell. That's real. how we'll you're know. You're a real one. You stuck around the whole time. Ah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, you can catch tonight's game on SiriusXM. You can download the SiriusXM app. Of course, they have free trials. You sign up. You get like three months. You can just look it up. Like literally just like look up Sirius XM free trial and they have like a three month trial. That's what I'm on. It's great. Um, and I know Stace, you're on that Sirius X game, XM game too. Gee, you said that five times fast. Um, yes. Anyway, coming up on Thursday in Lockdown Yankees, of course, we're going to chat about this final game 
and uh, give us give you some of our thoughts on how the series has gone, and of course start previewing a, previewing a little bit about how this Tampa Bay series is going to go. That's a, that's a real big one and a big off day on Thursday. The Yankees really really need this off day, um, and they will gladly take it. But that's going to do it for today's episode. I'm Steve Granado, and I'm Stacey Gatsoulias. We'll see you tomorrow.